Hello and welcome to Our County, Our Future. I'm Mark Ellinger. This week we'll focus on public works projects in and around Jefferson City and Cole County. Our guests will be Public Works Director for the City of Jefferson, Roger Swartz, and Public Works Director for Cole County, Larry Benz. We'll also take a focus in our Young Professional segment on internships, where to get them, how to do them, and most importantly, how to grow the interns and young folks in our community. All this looking forward to how we improve our community, because after all, it's our county, our future. Welcome back to Our County, Our Future. For our first segment, we'll talk about public works in and around Jefferson City and Cole County. Our guests, Roger Swartz, the Public Works Director for the City of Jefferson. Welcome to the show, Roger. Good morning, Mark. And Larry Benz, the Public Works Director for Cole County. Good morning, Mark. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, both for coming on the show. We very much appreciate it. I know folks out there are going to have a lot of interesting uh, information that they're going to get out of the show today. So thanks for coming on. Um, Larry, I'm going to start with you. Uh, you've you and I worked together uh, as, as commissioner and as public works director. And maybe you can tell folks out there a little bit about how you came to end up in the position of public works director for Cole County and really what that job entails. Well, I started my career uh, back in 1979 with MoDOT. Uh, I had a heavy emphasis in construction. Uh, I worked out of the local construction office. Uh, due to the budget cuts back then, we, I went to uh, DNR. I didn't want to live out of suitcase for several years. Uh, and then uh, uh, did land reclamation programs. And then back in 1995, uh, the county engineer's position came open. Uh, I was fortunate enough to get it. Uh, it was one of my dreams always to be able to work for the county. I've done a lot of volunteer work here and uh, it's grown into where when Chris Yarnell left, I was able to get the director's position. Uh, it's a very fulfilling job. I might tell folks out there a little bit about what county public works entails. Well, it, out in the county, we deal with all the uh, roads um, other than uh, state routes. Anything that's got a letter designation or number designation uh, is a MoDOT road, uh, like Highway C, Highway B, those are all MoDOT. Um, the name streets uh, that are in green signs are the ones we maintain. We have 470 miles of road that we maintain, uh, approximately uh, two-thirds of it now, three-fourths of it is getting to where it's paved. Uh, we still do have some gravel roads uh, that we maintain yet here in the county. Uh, Roger, your, your path to become public works director is slightly different, I think, than Larry's, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, I started out with MoDOT, though, also, and, and I spent 34 years at <laughs> MoDOT uh, and was the district engineer here in central Missouri uh, uh, for the last 12 of those years. So. I was involved in a, a lot of the projects, though, here in central Missouri when you look at what was done uh, in this area, and certainly that was exciting, and, and that's really what was appealing to me to come to the city is uh, uh, the city's got a, a lot of capital improvements uh, that are underway jointly with the county, so uh, I'm looking forward to doing those kind of things. And, and city public works is a little different than county public works. Maybe you can give folks out there a feel for, for both what you all do at, at City Public Works and really how it's different. Yeah, it, it is different because ours is more urban, certainly, uh, and the areas that I'm responsible for does include streets, which we've got about 250 miles of road. And, uh, but in addition to that, we've got an airport that we take care of. Uh, we've got a sewer system that we uh, uh, have and maintain and operate. And we have a transit system. Uh, all those are part of the Public Works Department at the City of Jefferson. You know, in looking at some of the upcoming public works issues, obviously every year we deal with weather-related issues, and so far, knock on wood, we've had a, a fairly mild winter. Uh, can you explain a little bit from a city perspective how you get ready for winter weather and really what steps you have to take to make sure that the streets are, are travelable for all of our citizens? Well, uh, first of all, it starts out with being prepared, and you've got to have all your equipment ready. You, you got to go into the fall 
checking all of those spreaders to make sure the chains aren't froze up from the previous year. You, you got to have the equipment ready. You got to have your materials ready. You got to have all of your salt and, and other chemicals that you use uh, ready when winter season comes. Uh, you got to have a forecast that uh, lets you know not only when is the storm going to start, but the key thing for us is when is that pavement going to go below freezing so that we know that we've got folks out there that can address those situations. And every storm is different. You have to fight them all different. And, and really out in the county, it's a whole different ball game because there's not only paved roads as there are in the city, but you have gravel roads. How does that change the dynamics of, of dealing the gravel with roads weather? The gravel roads present an issue for us, especially with ice. Uh, we can't go out and use the chemicals, the, the salt uh, mainly. What we use is a mix. Uh, we put a little salt in it just to get through the ice but there's a lot of cinders or sand in there with it. Uh, we normally, the gravel roads are, are more travelable early on, so we normally, we focus on our paved roads first, and then we can't come in with the, the trucks after we get done there and do the gravels. And I know that after winter weather, uh, and particularly after a wet spring, we see a lot of problems with gravel roads, maintenance and upkeep. And I know that that's a key component of what uh, public works in the county certainly does, and also in the city is maintaining those roads. Uh, a component of that is overlaying gravel, and a component of that's overlaying the pavement. Uh, Larry, could you talk a little bit about the plan, planning process and the plans for overlaying and road maintenance in the upcoming year? What we're doing right now, we're actually putting our list of roads together for overlay program. Uh, we roughly got a million dollars every year under the new sales tax to put into our overlay program. And we're going through and evaluating the roads uh, at the present time to see which ones we feel it needs to be uh, overlaying so they stay in a good shape. Uh, we try and do the, the best first, uh, which uh, some people don't understand, but it, it makes sense to um, keep your roads in good shape, not let them deteriorate down to where they're uh, in poor shape where you have a lot of problems, where you have to re actually rebuild a road. And what about maintenance of gravel roads? I mean, that's a different ball game. Well, gravel roads, what we're doing now, uh, we start in the fall, uh, we start hauling rock in, we try and get them bladed up and get the potholes out of them uh, to where it doesn't hold water. Uh, we try and get as much rock on it as we can. Uh, like with any county, we can't afford to go out and then put gravel from shoulder to shoulder on all these roads, but we try and recover as much as it may have gone into the ditch and bring it back to the road and get them shaped up to where they're draining good. Now, Roger, inside the city, you don't have the gravel road issue, so it's really focusing in overlay projects on pavement. Right. Uh, but there's a lot of dense urban areas, and, and it's a kind of a different dynamic, uh, a different way you go about doing overlays, isn't it? Well, sure. You, you can't just keep building up where you have curb and gutter uh, roadways. Uh, and what we see in the neighborhood streets that don't have the thickness of the uh, uh, pavement material, you'll see crumbling starting next to the curbs. Those kind of things is typically where you'll first start to see the roads deteriorating. And we've got a lot of those that are in need of work. Uh, we're in the same position right now. We're, we're going around the city. Uh, we've been doing that the past couple of weeks. Uh, trying to rate our roads to see which ones are in the most need of resurfacing. And, and we also have about a million dollars in our program for this summer for overlays. So we're identifying those routes right now and we're going to try to stretch those dollars as far as we can to get as many of those roads done as, as we can. But there are more needs today than what there are dollars available for those overlays. And, and when you're looking at evaluating roads, I assume the citizens uh, are welcome to call in or contact your office, either one of your all's offices, yes. and let them know about that, right? Absolutely. We would welcome that uh, if they have particular roads. I got a note yesterday from someone to, that uh, was commenting on that specific thing. but. We would certainly welcome that. Uh, our council certainly involved in, uh, we give them a list of roads that we've identified and, and uh, they then you know, will ultimately uh, sign off and give us approval to, to move forward with those projects. But uh, uh, they get to have a feel for which ones we're seeing as the, in, in the highest need. And, and that's the same way with the county. You know, with having 470 miles road, we can't get over them all on a regular basis. So we encourage people to call in. If there's an issue out there, uh, whether it's a gravel road and it's muddy, we ask that they call in, let us know. They'll make a complaint card up on it. We'll send someone out, take a look at it, and if necessary, we'll get something done for them. Now, out in the county, uh, many of our roads do not have curb, gutter, and sidewalks. So 
the process is a little different. How, how do folks go about getting curb, gutters, sidewalks if they have an interest out in the county, and how do they repair them in the city? Larry, if you want to take that first. If they don't have curb and gutter out in the, in the county, uh, normally, you know, if it's on a major arterial road like uh, Bighorn Drive, we did a couple years ago, um, we schedule that into our capital improvements. Um, majority of them, uh, we just don't have the funding, like Roger said. We've got more expenses than we've got funds for. The, there is a, the uh, NID process where if the neighborhood wants to improve their, their system, uh, they can do it and, uh, and work through the process and get it done. We've had several of them do that were private roads uh, over the past years that I've been here. So uh, there are avenues for people to be able to improve their, their neighborhoods. And what about inside the city, Roger? Same system, basically? We, we have a similar type of system uh, because we have a neighborhood improvement program also where citizens can come to the city and, and petition to have uh, a street improved. Uh, typically ours are replacing sidewalks and replacing curbs. Uh, El Marine was a good example of a street that uh, the city uh, worked with the uh, neighborhood last year and, and made improvements to. And, and we've got a couple more in the works that are, that are upcoming uh, in the future. Broadway is going to be the next one that we work on uh, to upgrade those curbs and sidewalks. Uh, uh, but when you're looking at uh, overlays, uh, we also we, we look at the neighborhood streets, but we also have to look at those primary roads that the city has to take care of, the, those snow routes that carry the higher volumes of traffic, and uh, certainly they're a higher priority to keep in good condition because they carry a lot more traffic than even the neighborhood streets. Okay, well, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we'll come back with... Uh a focus on young professionals, and then come back with our guests, Larry Benz and Roger Schwartz, on Our County, Our Future. Coming home can be hard if you're a veteran of Iraq or Afghanistan. You may feel like you're all alone, but you're not alone. At IAVA.org, your fellow vets are all around you. Join our free online community, get the resources you need, and connect to other vets who know where you're coming from. IAVA.org, we've got your back. Welcome back to Our County, Our Future. We now turn to our focus on young professionals in our community. Our guest today is Stephanie Bell. Stephanie's going to talk a little bit about the internship program that's been started in Jefferson City. Welcome to the show, Stephanie. Thank you. Uh, like many young professionals, uh, I know that you're from Jefferson City originally, but you went off to school and you came back. Maybe to give people a little bit of background, they talk a little bit about why you decided to come back to Jefferson City and what the appeal of Jefferson City is to you. Sure. Um, I did uh, grow up in Jefferson City, and then I went to Truman State University um, in Kirksville, Missouri. Then I moved to Columbia. I uh, went to University of Missouri uh, Law School. And when returning, um, I just found that Jefferson City had some great opportunities for young professionals. There were a lot of young professionals doing some exciting things here in town, some new organizations like HYPE uh, here in town, and I think um, it was just the right place for me to come back. And you had been an intern at one time in the mm -hmm. state capitol, right? Correct. I had interned in the Missouri Senate through a program through Truman State University. I met other people who had interned and who had decided to make Jefferson City their home and um, who other people had found lots of opportunities here in town for them. So we now have a new internship <laughs> program that's being started under the Chamber of Commerce. It's called Jefferson City Start. Correct. And you're the creator, innovator, and originator of this program. So. First of all, why don't you tell folks a little bit about how the idea came about? 
Well, the idea came about um, when I was in the Truman State University intern program. There was an established program where the uh, other interns would get together once a week and they would learn more about opportunities in state government learn more um, about each other, learn more about other experiences in Jefferson City. And we thought um, beyond that program, there aren't other opportunities like that for interns, perhaps in businesses or in nonprofits. So the idea was to maybe model after some of the other programs the Chamber was already doing, like Leadership Jefferson City, and bring those interns together, t uh, let them meet each other, teach them a little bit more about Jefferson City and about opportunities for young professionals. And now we've got the program kind of just started up and running. Uh, tell folks a little bit about how the program Jefferson City Start actually works. Well, there are two goals in the program. Um, the first goal is to connect students to the community. And the second goal is to connect employers um, and students looking for internships, connect those two groups of people. So as far as the um, connecting students to the community, we've done um, a kickoff last summer. We had a program called JC 101. We had the interns in. They did a lunch with community leaders and with young professionals. They did a bus tour around town and saw some places that even if they were from Jefferson City, maybe they weren't familiar with. Um, then they kind of did a Q&A with young professionals. You know, where do I work out? Where do I go to eat? What is there for me to do? What organizations can I join? So just welcoming them to our community and teaching them a little bit more um, about what it's like to be a young professional in Jefferson City. And that was really last year and that was Correct. very successful. I know I got the uh, opportunity to attend one of those meetings, mm -hmm. a lot of younger folks, but now we're kind of into the second phase, which is really matching, as you said, interns with businesses. How's that process going to work? Well, all, the process is actually taking place through our website, which is jeffcitystart.com, and employers looking for interns um, can fill out an available internship request form, submit that through our website, and we'll be compiling all of those available internships into a report and then putting that out to students, to students, to colleges, and to universities, saying, look, these are all of the available internships here in Jefferson City, and those students can then um, apply to those businesses and hopefully fill some of those internship roles. Students can also submit their resumes through the website. Okay, so folks that are out there watching today, if they know of a business that might need an intern, or if they know of a young person who'd like to do an internship, how do they get involved in this program? They can visit our website and they can fill out an um, internship form or the students can submit their resume. And so all the information is available on our website. Um, there's an email address they can contact um, and there's also a Facebook page that they can get. What is with. the uh, website? The website's www.jeffcitystart.com. Okay, it's, it's a great program and it's a great opportunity long term. What's the, the goal of the Jefferson City START program? Well, I think the goal of the program is when the program first started, we were identifying some issues here in Jefferson City, and that was losing young professionals or maybe just the general perception that Jefferson City is a great place to raise a family, but maybe not a great place to just start your career. And so I think the goal is first to um, attract and retain those young professionals, those people who are already in our town, taking these internships, taking these job opportunities, and making sure they know that there are other opportunities here in Jefferson City for them. And then just just um, by welcoming them and by showing them what our community has to offer, um, changing that perception that Jefferson City really is a great place um, for a young professional to start, take those first few steps in their career. And congratulations to you on starting this program. In fact, you've been recognized now by the Chamber of Commerce as the first winner of the Fast Forward Award mm -hmm. for creating the program. It's a great honor and it's a great thing you've done for our community. Thank you. Thank you. As you can tell, we have great young people in our community. They're creating new programs. They're really trying to improve the livability of our town and perhaps more importantly, attract new people into our community. Stephanie Bell and the group out at Hype really have done a great job and they continue to make strides forward. We're proud to have Stephanie on the show. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you to all the young folks out there. We'll be back shortly to continue our program with the Public Works Directors from Jefferson City and Cole County.
So my uncle calls and he says he's dizzy and he's losing his balance. I'm like, uncle, you want me to take you to a doctor? He's like, no, I'm going to look up the symptoms. I said, your symptoms are you're dizzy and you're losing your balance. So he said, I can't get on the internet because my arm is numb. I said, well, use your good arm and dial 911. Stroke's no joke. If you or someone you love is showing symptoms of stroke, don't wait because it might be too late. Dial 911. Time lost is brain loss. Welcome back to Our County, Our Future. We're continuing our discussion with Larry Benz, the Director of Public Works for Cole County, and Roger Schwartz, the Director of Public Works for the City of Jefferson. Again, gentlemen, thanks for being on the show. Uh, in the last capital improvement sales tax cycle, there were a number of cooperative projects uh, that were agreed upon between Jefferson City and, and Cole County, and that really continues a trend of cooperative projects between the city and the county. Uh, now that we're into the new cycle, sales tax cycle, uh, I'd like you guys to discuss a little bit about these upcoming cooperative projects, and maybe, Roger, you can start off. The first project really on the board looks to be the Frog Hollow Bridge uh, uh, project. Maybe you can tell folks a little bit about the history of that and why it's important and where we're at on that. Well, certainly when you look at Frog Hollow Road today, uh, there's a bad curve uh, just approaching the bridge. The bridge is very narrow. It's not in good condition. Uh, certainly uh, an important project to uh, get the safety improved there as well as the condition of that bridge. And, and that's really what uh, is going on with the current design for that project. We are in the design phase. Uh, we'll be having uh, public meetings to get public input on the design for that project. And that'll probably actually be coming up next month. Uh, so that project is getting close. Uh, we hope to go to bid uh, here in a couple of months and have that construction underway later this year. And, and Larry, that's, I get a lot of questions about it's inside the city, it's outside the city. That area out where the Frog Hollow project's going in really is a, a mix of city and county areas. Right. And, and how, how, from a county perspective, is that project going to be important for you all? Well, it's important for us because it's access to the, the west portion of Frog Hollow that's still ours. So it's important also because of the bridges. When we first started looking at that while it was still in the unincorporated portion of the county, uh, the issue with the bridges was a major deal. St. Mary's came into the picture roughly nine, ten years ago, and we held off because we didn't know at that time there was plans possibly of putting in the connector down there. Uh, so we uh, held off on our plans uh, with the understanding that, you know, once we got to it, whether it was in the city or outside the city, that we would still participate, and that's what we've been able to do. And, you know, the St. Mary's project, putting in the, uh, the ramps at 179, that's been a cooperative project between the city, the county, and, and ultimately MoDOT, along with uh, uh, St. Mary's. That was a big project in the last cycle. Yeah. Uh, as we look here into the new cycle, uh, another big project we've been talking about is Stadium Boulevard, uh, Jefferson Street, Highway 54, where uh, so many of the schools are located. Uh, maybe, Larry, it, as an initial take, could you talk a little bit about that particular intersection, some of the plans we're looking at for doing that in the future? And again, we're working with that with the three of us, uh, the city, uh, the county, and MoDOT. Uh, the issue there is, uh, especially in the mornings, that uh, traffic backs up out on the 54, right around that curve. Uh, that's been a concern of mine for a number of years of, of getting someone hurt. You know, someone coming around at 60 mile an hour, coming around that curve, and all of a sudden traffic stopped. Uh, because of the intersection uh, that we were going to get somebody hurt. So we're, I think we're all working together to correct a problem uh, and get it uh, changed to where we don't have that. And Roger, really, from your background and in your new position, you have a, a really unique take on this. It's a very difficult intersection there. You know, what are some of the problems that you anticipate are going to come down the line in having that project come to fruition? Well, some of the things that we're looking at is uh, the existing traffic today is a problem. Uh, but what is it going to be in the future? You know, the, the school district's making some plans as to what their future is going to be at their facility. That can change the traffic pattern and we want to make sure that we do the right thing that will fit uh, the improvements that we put in need to fit the uh, uh, situation for a long time to come. And uh, we don't want to build something and, and then it not be the right fix when we get done. So we're, we're studying this and uh, looking at it and trying to make sure we're gonna do the right thing. Now those, both Frog Hollow 
and the, the interchange we are just talking about down there at 54 Stadium. Those are existing projects that have to be really rebuilt. Uh, we also look at building new projects, and one of those is the Wildwood Road extension. Uh, Roger, talk a little bit about Wildwood Road, that whole West Edgewood area, and why that's an important project. Well, when you look today, uh, where are opportunities for the de development here in the city of Jefferson? Certainly that 179 Edgewood corridor have a lot of areas with a lot of potential. Uh, Wildwood would extend to the south and ultimately hook up to Rock Quarry Road. And when you build that road, it, it makes a network of arterial streets out there that uh, can handle traffic for many, many years to come. And certainly, you know, if you build it, they will come attitude. Uh, hopefully that would be the case here in, in Jefferson City. And Larry, I know that Cole County's really kind of taken the lead on that project simply because it's been in the county for so many years. It's been a difficult project to put together. It offers some fairly unique uh, problems. You could let folks out there know a little bit about the planning process that went into it and, and why it's taken a while to really come to fruition. Uh, it, with any project, especially on new projects, when you're dealing with right-of-way, that brings up a whole other issue. Uh, we were able to work with the landowners out there and get a road that best fit our needs as well as fit their needs. Uh, and that's what it, it takes time. Uh, you know, we're work, we've worked through it. We've got all the right-of-way now and uh, it's ready for construction uh, whenever the, uh, the city council and the commission deem it ready to go. Now we're starting to run out of time here, but there's a couple of projects I really would like to have a quick discussion about. That's uh, roads uh, and, and improvements in the Missouri State Penitentiary site and some of the old town street improvements. All those kind of yep. go hand in hand. Yep. Uh, Roger, maybe real quick, if you could touch on the street improvements in the old town area, and Larry, if you could talk a little bit about the MSP roads. Well, certainly we're looking at uh, trying to maintain those streets in good condition. Uh, uh, they're on our resurfacing list as, as areas that we're looking at. And when we try to resurface, we're going to try to make sure that we've uh, come in ahead of time, fix the curbs up so that when we overlay the road that they're in good condition. The other thing that we have to work with in the Old Town area very much is the utility companies. Uh, Missouri American Water has a lot of water lines. They're very old as well and some of the roads that we want to overlay this year, we're going to probably have to wait and let them complete waterline work and come back in the following year to uh, actually overlay them. So there is a lot of coordination that needs to take place there. And, you know, to take that one step further, we talked about Jefferson. We're also working on the other side of uh, Lafayette uh, with MoDOT and the city as a joint project to do the interchange. Uh, past projects that we've done is on Lafayette. We're currently working on East McCarty with the city. Again, this, these are all arterial roads coming into the MSP. Uh, we feel that the interchange will be a big ac asset to the city and county. Uh, wanted to give another uh, direct route to the schools, plus to the development up around the federal courthouse. Well, we've, there's so many more projects we could talk about. We're kind of running out of time now. I want to thank both you gentlemen for coming on. Hopefully, maybe we can get you on later uh, in another show. We can talk about some of the things we haven't talked about, yep. storm water. I mean, there's all, all right. sorts of things. Uh, maybe before we go out, if you uh, could give your all's contact information so if people do have questions or concerns, they can get in touch with you. Roger? Uh, you can contact me at the City of Jefferson. It's 634-6430. And you can contact me at Coal County Public Works, the number is 636-3614. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming on the Thank show. You. Thank you. Very much you. appreciate it. As you can tell, there are a lot of exciting projects going on in Jefferson City. Cole County and Jefferson City working together are doing road projects to really expand uh, economic development in our community and to ensure that our roads are safe, not just for our citizens, but for our guests and for our young folks. Speaking of young folks, you've learned that we have a great intern initiative program in this community. Really, we're working hard, city government, county government, the Chamber of Commerce, all the players, to make Jefferson City and Cole County a better place to live and a place that will be inviting and appealing to young folks, to working folks, and to retired folks. After all, we have to all work together because it is our county, our future. Thank you. Good night.